this is you know a big multi-step process obviously uh, getting something this big put together and we've gone through a number of initial kind of rough designs and we've moved it along through schematic design now and looked at a lot of the components uh, in a fairly detailed way but not the final design so um, this has allowed us to really take a look at the layouts and where everything will be and how it will be configured and uh, council passed that yesterday, so that allows us to move into our final design phase, which should be ready sometime in the summer, and it keeps us on the timeline that we've been trying to uh, uh, stay tight to, which would allow us to open in uh, you know, late summer, or very early fall in 2022. And so also right now you're you're waiting on a few things, I'm assuming for funds to come through, um, you know, talk about that as well. Well, I don't know what COVID-19 means for the internal government process. And, and that's been a, a bit of a challenge for us because we were hoping to hear by the end of the winter from the province what projects they would nominate forward to the federal government uh, and then get that final stamp of approval. And if we could get that, obviously, sooner rather than later, that's great because we're still uh, going down a parallel set of tracks, planning for either the full facility or if we don't get the funding, uh, the arena and kind of the community, you know, hall portion, that foyer portion. Um, so it, it would be nice to know exactly what we're going to build uh, and exactly who's going to be contributing. And, and hopefully that answer will come sooner rather than later. But I can tell you that we've done all the preparation that we can in terms of getting information into the hands of the government. Uh, and, and I think something that hopefully will work in our favor is that uh, once we start getting out of uh, you know, this very confusing time period, the government is going to want to stimulate the economy with uh, spending and we've got a shovel ready project. So we hope that moves us even further up the list of uh, projects that they would fund. Now we'll talk about the COVID um, relief fund. So talk about what that entails and I guess who it applies to. So we've uh, established a $40,000 fund and council approved that uh, yesterday and we want to be there to help nonprofits and other agencies in the community that that help others. So, uh, you know, those those other groups, whether it's food banks or um, nonprofits and, and other groups that do such great work with different sectors of Bracebridge already, they're the ones that are experts at it. Uh, we just want to make sure that they have adequate funding because we know at a time like this, donations can also you know dip and um, it can be hard uh, on the best of days for some of these groups to, to keep a steady funding stream. So really, uh, there's a, a number of categories and and the, the process is fairly simple and they could check with the town to get more information to see if uh, they qualify, uh, but we'll be doing a, a first round of intake and, you know, we'll see where it goes from here. If it turns out that that money goes pretty quickly and it's felt that, um, you know, more money is needed for that type of community support, you know, we'll take a look at it again. I'm not going to make any promises, of course, on behalf of council, but again, we want to be doing our part to make sure that these wonderful groups that support so many in our community can keep doing that.